The Late Morning Program with Nam Ras Podcast. Hare Krishna, everyone. You are listening to the number one Hare Krishna podcast in the world. This is the Late Morning Program with your host, uh, Nam Ras. I'm here with uh, His Grace Sanak Sanatan Prabhu from Iskon Vrindavan. Today, we're going to be talking about His Holiness uh, Lokanath Maharaj and the situation that we have on our hands uh, in ISKCON regarding the um, Lokanath Maharaj's issue, which we will get into. Uh, and Sanak Sanatan Prabhu comes to us from the team of Lokanath Maharaj's servants and uh, disciples. And he will give his perspective and also uh, Maharaj's perspective on this issue that has come up. Till now, Maharaj's team has not said anything regarding this issue. There has been a lot of back and forth on the internet with many different devotees. And now we are hearing from Lokanath Maharaj's team led by Sanak Sanatan Prabhu. So before we get into that, Sanak Sanatan Prabhu, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and about how you joined Krishna Consciousness very briefly, just so we get an, uh, an outlook on your background? Hi, yeah. Um, uh, I got, uh, I'm born in 1966. Uh, I'm actually born on the day uh, Silla Prabhupada inaugurated that movement. And mm -hmm. I came in contact uh, with uh, Krishna Consciousness uh, in 88 in Berlin. And um, then I uh, spent one year in Germany up and down. And then I got a desire to, I was thinking, uh, Krishna is in Vrindavan, they were always telling, and uh, then they're shown a movie, Krishna and the Land of Vrindavan. It's a, it's a short documentary movie, and uh, I thought if Krishna is in Vrindavan, let me go there. Obviously, the devotees this encouraged me a lot, but I took the idea that before I joined the sect, I should go and uh, see Krishna in Vrindavan. So I came to Vrindavan. I joined three days after reaching Vrindavan in the Krishna Balaram temple. And in the same year, in 89, then um, I went on Rajmandal Padigrama, I met the Padyatra devotees and I was very much inspired by them. And then for 10 years, I traveled with the Padyatra all around India. I went to uh, Chadam Yatra all around India two and a half times. And uh, then I realized that maybe that Brahmachari thing isn't so fully my thing for the rest of my life. I got married. I married a Brahmin girl from India, from Maharashtra, which uh, was very interesting because uh, we went uh, the round before with Padiata to the village, we preached to that family. Um, the father bought two books. Uh, her uncle, my wife's uncle, uh, they're owning the Ram Temple. Uh, he was a host for us. So then uh, when we walked around India one more round and we came back, there were devotees and I was looking for to marry somebody. I went to the marriage council somehow or another that uh, I met her father and he said, hey, yeah. And so I got married. Then I shifted to Pandapur after getting married. I was there for five years. Uh, I built a temple there as a Radha Pandana temple. After the deities were installed, it was a very, very big festival. Uh, I felt my old, uh, my old uh, desire to go to Vrindavan. I, I thought I can turn Pandapur to, into Vrindavan. That didn't really happen. <laughs> and uh, Bhakti Rasam Rita Maharaj uh, uh, took over the management in Vrindavan. I had to, after the, at the 2001 Kumbha Mela, um, I had been before and after the Kumbha Mela in Vrindavan and I, I really, really wanted to stay there, but the management wasn't, wasn't suiting to me. So Bhakti Rasam Rita Maharaj uh, was my old friend from Belgium, that that time Devam Rita Prabhu. And uh, I rang somebody and after five minutes, uh, Bhakti Rasam Rita Maharaj rang me, said, hey, pack your bags right now, you come here and help me. So I took another two, three months and I came to Vrindavan and since then I'm in Vrindavan. Pretty much from the beginning I was doing the Goshala and now I'm also in the management uh, uh, doing Thank many you. other things as well. Thank you very much. So why is it now that the team that you lead that represents His Holiness Lokanath Swami, you would like to speak out now? So 
first of all, from my own heart, I, I took initiation in 90, in the Kartik 90, so that uh, basically six months after the incident, but it was a non-incident then. So uh, I took initiation and uh, then I wasn't, uh, I was on Padi at that time Jai Vijay was our leader and Jai Vijay never took second initiation. So second initiation wasn't an issue. Then I was supposed to take over Padiatra in 96 and some other devotees took second initiation and they felt like uh, you, are, you have to take second initiation. And so then I first of all realized that many years there was no initiations. Maharaj said because he was uh, so busy for some tenure, uh, he just wouldn't initiate. And then I was in the first batch of initiation uh, in 96. In, uh, in the Jagannath temple in Mayapur. That was the first time Maharaj gave after four, four years of, of not giving initiation. So I was in the batch and then first time I was uh, exposed to that, to that situation. And I have to tell you all those years in my heart, I always felt Maharaj must have done something very wrong. By now I'm also, I, I'm also father of three children and I'm working actively with child protection here in Vrindavan. Many times uh, I'm, I help with cases, bring out things. Uh, so so I'm, I'm, I took the seminar, I took the course, I read books. So I'm, I'm quite acquainted with the, whole, with the whole concept. So in my heart. So what happened is that uh, when this time the issue came up, the ISKCON India got very active and uh, somehow another they, they formed a committee and made me the, uh, the representative of the disciples so it's the first time I, i'm not i'm i'm a dedicated disciple but i'm more a proud part person i brought up on padiatra like that and it's not like a, uh, i'm just you know a guru group person I, i'm rather an iskon and proud part person and i had this doubt in my mind and then so that's the first time I actually had to represent Maharaj and now I had to first of all straighten my own, my, my own mind, what I really want to do here and, and how far I, I want to put my neck on, the, on that block. And so I started to get to read all the things and, and check out and went back to, back to the 93, read what, uh, what all has been said and done. All the, and, and I realized, first of all, for myself, that, uh, that, uh, that I had a doubt that was a mistake. That, that was my first important step, because if I want to represent somebody and I'm not convinced that he's innocent, I couldn't do that. Right. So, so, so after, af after that, I first of all, all realized that something had gone very wrong. And then uh, uh, this our our uh, from our team, there was a leader of the ICC that is a representative of all the Indian temples. And then there was IIAC, that's the next higher body, and the bureau, we all came together. And I, I was put into the committee to deal with the GBC. So I had to uh, make myself intelligent. I see. Rewinding back a little bit, tell us a little bit about the situation. When you're talking about the situation, for those of who, who who don't know or who have only heard one side what's your perspective of what happened um okay maharaj was in mayapur he very badly twisted his ankle he was uh, had a lot of pain he was put in a cast and uh, a normal person most probably would have not traveled to America. He was on pain medication also. So, but uh, for him, the Spadiata America was a very, very important issue, a very important event for him. Uh, the idea of preaching in America like Sula Prabhupada and, and visit, visit, visit instructions Sula Prabhupada had given him do Padiatra. So he went there uh, in his condition. And with him was Radharaman, he's now Maharaj Prabhu. They traveled there together and uh, the Padiatra wasn't actually uh, promoted anymore as a Padiatra. They had some problems there that was called the Robin Jones case. So uh, the whole team of the Padiatra uh, was that religion is not a crime. So Maharaj came there and uh, Abai Prabhu was leading that over there. It was, a, it was a whole thing. It was relatively very good organized. Uh, 
So Maharaj came to the Philadelphia temple and he stayed there and his room was two floors up and one man from the congregation, uh, Kamalanath Panda, he seen that and he told the Maharaj, uh, oh, you're struggling here so much, why don't you come to my home? And the Maharaj agreed. So he went to his home and once he was at his home, Maharaj was sitting there and one foot was in the plaster. Kamalanath Panda was mas massaging Maharaj's uh, non-plastered foot and with tears in his eyes, he told him that my older daughter, oldest daughter is living independent. She's living with an African American. I'm a Varanasi Brahmin. I came here, I sold my, I sold my cars to make money. Uh, I'm in great, great distress. He was literally crying tears. He said, my second daughter is also <clears throat> already living outside. She's, uh, she's independent. Now I only have my last daughter left. Uh, you please uh, teach my daughter uh, Vedic culture, you please help me to make my last daughter Krishna conscious. So, so that that is a, the, the scene because many people ask, what was the business of Maharaj? And I had asked myself that always. He was a sannyasi. What business? He, he, had, he had to be in a room with a young girl. Right. right. right? So yeah. that is that is the first the scene. So you have to understand Maharaj is a very active person. If you hear testimonies from people who was with Maharaj on Padayatra uh, in the early days. They literally had to stop Maharaj from preaching and said, look, we have to arrange for cooking now, we have to eat. And Maharaj uh, had to be literally dragged away from preaching so, so that, they, that they would uh, eat something. So, so, so now you have to understand such an active Maharaj is coming and sitting now in, some, in somebody's family home. Right. Uh, and 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 this this uh, this uh, head of the family is saying, look, man, now you're here. I brought you here, and 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 don't think this is for free. You have to you have to now work it out with my daughter. You have to teach my daughter. And there was nothing else to do, right? Him and and rather Man Prabhu would read a lot, and this house is reading came along. Because actually every morning, it wasn't a, 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 every morning, three of them were reading Hare Krishna, the, as a Krishna book. Radha Raman Maharaj, Lokanath Maharaj and Satya, they were sitting together and rotating uh, the reading. And at this particular day, um, uh, Radha Raman Maharaj had gotten upstairs. There was like a mezzanine floor. Lokanath Maharaj and Radha Raman Maharaj were actually living in the master bedroom. And uh, Kamalanath Pandey and his wife had shifted downstairs. It was a couple of, you, you know, you have said uh, where, where you have a, have a room on top of the garage in the house. Yes. So that's where the master, it was also some, some certain, certain steps up. And Radhaman Maharaj was upstairs. That, that is a, the ground scene, what, 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 what happened. Okay. So out, out of, out of, in that situation, uh, Maharaj was holding, the Krishna book on his hand and just think the situation if you read with somebody it is not that easy to hold the book and shift it forward and backward and the book was uh, was lifted and set down uh, on, on Satya's lap <coughs> leg, a first upper leg on Maharaja's leg it went forward and backward at some given point of time, it landed more towards towards a, towards a, a lower part of, of the lake. And Maharaj uh, uh, at some point noticed that Satya is feeling uncomfortable. She looked at him. He looked at Satya. Uh, he felt very shameful, and he lifted up. He lifted up the thing, and that thing came to an end. Okay. So. The point I'm making is, and what I'm understanding for I read what Satya said in her original 93. Uh, so th that's that's the situation. Okay. But then comes the whole other thing. Many people think, okay, now the situation has happened. Now everyone got angry and that's it. But no, nothing happened thereafter. Rather opposite. Kamalanath Panda asked Lokanath Maharaj to find him a devotee who is a Brahmin as well. No? And uh, Lokanath Maharaj, uh, he had never arranged a marriage for anyone. He's a sannyasi. But after after thinking, he was thinking, I have one one devotee, original secretary there also. So after Maharaj had left that house, uh, uh, that marriage was arranged. So the relationship with the family was absolutely fine. There was a, after that incident happened. And Satya says in her own testament, yes, uh, I told it to my mother. 
she told it to my sister and they didn't make anything of it. The, the so Sar- marriage was arranged with who and who? Uh, between Sar- So you said that uh, she told it to her mother, she told it to her sister, and they didn't think anything of it. Yeah, that's what is in Satya, Satya's own word. Okay. In, in, in her original 93 testament. And okay. uh, it, it, so that means she known about the incident. And if, if Maharaj would have been an evil child abuser, she would have never married somebody Maharaj would have suggested, right? Hmm. I mean, marriage is not a small thing, right? Yes. You're very careful. Uh, and if you, so, so then, then, then that marriage took place and uh, uh, they were living in Delhi. And Satya even came to Delhi and stayed with, uh, with, with her older sister. They stayed there together. And then, then some unfortunate incident happened. I'm not fully sure. It seems some financial inappropriation or something was removed from his post in India. Not by Maharaj, but by the Indian council. And I felt that Maharaj could have used his veto right to save him. But actually, I don't think Maharaj had much take into the issue. Because Maharaj was the one who placed him there. So he felt now, now things gone sour. He should better stay out of that. To some, I, I don't know exactly. So, um, so this devotee, he had a, he had a post in India, even though he was from, he was an American married there. No, no, he was from India and he actually originally didn't want to marry somebody from America, but okay. he was a right caste and he was a devotee. He was a Varanasi area somewhere, Brahmi. I see. And Kamal Nath Pandav was a Brahmin. So he asked Lokanath Maharaj to find somebody who is a devotee. But who is also from the from from the Brahmin caste? He was belonging to a, in order to at least one daughter should should uh, uh, go the right path from the family point of view, from the caste point of view. Okay, so why is it important? Why is this detail important in this story? Yeah, so so, so you, you you see. I just want to make the point, the family uh, after the 90 incident was totally fine with Maharaj and Maharaj arranged their marriage. And then then what happened is after he removed from his post, uh, he had to go back to America for whatever reason. And after he reached to America, he became very immunical. He became Ritwik and he called to Mukunda Maharaj and said a big abuse has happened. <coughs> So uh, be- before there was no question of abuse. Satya even came to Delhi and stayed there. Mm. So uh, uh, definitely coming to Delhi means Lokanath Maharaj is somewhere around, right? Right. So you're saying and that this this situation was worsened by this call that was made to Mukunda Maharaj. No, that uh, b- before there was no abuse. Nobody would. Th- there was. A, was no abuse. Maharaj felt everything is okay. The family felt everything is okay. But okay. now calls to Mukunda Maharaj and he rolls out the thing. And even in the original 93 interview, the interviewer at some point clearly says that has your sister put you up to that? Mm-hmm. Because uh, because Satya wasn't coming out with things and her sister was telling, no, there's this, there's that, you have to say that. So, so the interviewer said, has your sister put you up to that? What's this interview? Um, after Mukunda Maharaj was informed, uh, then right. obviously commit committee was formed, and then uh, a, a whole uh, uh, interview was done. Two two times there was an interview was done with uh, with Satya, with somebody uh, with somebody uh, I think she known and who was knowing about child protection. They did an interview about the incident to find out what is Satya's opinion on the whole thing. I see. Okay, and then what happened after that whole investigation? Well, uh, well, first of all, there's another incident with, with, with uh, that is later on he was staying in the Los Angeles temple and again there was something about financial matter and he was doing rit- rit- preaching and he was removed from the temple and his wife very unfortunately got a miscarriage and then he blamed three North American sannyasis basically uh, uh, of, uh, of having, uh, having killed the child in the womb. So he, he has a history of, 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 uh, of acting out like that, of accusing other people. So 
then what happened next is that the interviews were done and then uh, i have to really say uh, heads heads up for the for the north american um council who, who dealt the case they sent maharaj to cap and associates that was a psychological evaluation uh, uh, institute which was uh, uh, working with child abuse and particularly child abuse uh, abuse in the glory they had uh, that, that was working with 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 priests and things who abuse kids in 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 in, in the in the church in america so, so that the was the so the committee that was formed to investigate this whole situation in 1993 or whatever it was they sent maharaj to a psychological psychiatric evaluation for child yes. abusers yes yes that, that 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 went on for two days that was fully hardcore like the, the full thing put electrodes over his butter show him naked kids and naked adults and this and that uh, i mean it was really hardcore and 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 they're given a clear report that they don't think maharaj is posing any danger to children to women and that it was a circumstantial uh uh, uh inappropriate touch which was done by accident uh, it, it wasn't that uh, he actually is a child abuser in any regard he came out very clear and 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 they spent a lot of money i think that was 1500 2000 dollars or something it wasn't that was a lot of money in those days is and they were qualified people is this documented somewhere yes okay yes so then then what happened after that then after that, uh, they, they came together. And first of all, Maharaj came to America. He given full obeisances to, 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 uh, to Satya and her family. He apologized uh, if he has created any harm. He was very apologetic. And uh, then the North American Council came together. And uh, that time already they came up with some apology letter, which wasn't really what the cap what the cap thing and the thing said, but uh, Maharaj uh, agreed upon that. It was not written by him. That's the first time some apology letter came out. And Maharaj was stopped from going to North America. Uh, he had to stay in Vrindavan for an extended period of time to just chant and reflect uh, on his sannyas and his situation. And he was stopped from giving initiation. Okay. And then from then until now, was there any anything anything else that happened or or in the sense of has this come to the surface or public any time it's just now coming first, first, first of all uh, i want to say that maharaj never had any any report of anything indecent prior to that incident and there is never any report uh, after that my two two of my kids got the uh, got the name by Radhanath Swami because my wife is Radhanath Maharaj's disciple and then uh, my last my daughter got the name by Lokanath Maharaj uh, he comes to my house and many times we go and visit him with my kids uh, I, right. I, I haven't I, his dealings with kids are rather reserved and totally normal mm -hmm. and yes so what happened is that the GBC uh, decided that uh, they want to keep that uh, uh how you call it secret i don't know what's the proper name they, they didn't want to uh bring that incident to the public the gbc decided that's why lokanath maharaj also never spoke he was supposed to not speak about that with anybody but then what happened in in uh, in 98 uh, after the centennial was over the um was some disagreement about some centennial fund or something so Sridhar Maharaj from Mumbai was upset with Lokanath Maharaj and he took a revenge because he was knowing about the incident and spoke to Yasamati Nandan from Ahmedabad and there had been uh, there had been some kind of a rhythmic movement was there in ISKCON India where a lot of uh, old-time leaders wasn't so happy with the zonal acharya singh and so so uh, yaso martinanda was rather a little bit that time on the ritvik side and then the whole thing spread out it went to some nivit narayan from delhi who was a press reporter big shot and uh, he put it in in, in 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 i think in india today or some magazine and uh, it blew up like anything and maharaj had to give in the daily auditorium in front of uh, hundreds of devotees he had to uh, explain the incident and apologize like that that what was year, very uh, what year was that yeah 
in 98, 98 or so. Oh, so it had resurfaced again at that time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is what, what, what the American devotees don't even know about. That was an internal thing. And it was very painful for Maharaj because he had a lot of disciples in Delhi. And uh, so like that, uh, Maharaj suffered a second time from that. And then again, things were quiet. And then Maharaj was invited to the, to the New York Radiatra in 2010. And his service was uh, to chant, I think, in front of Baladev or so, but I, I don't know exactly. In one of, front of one of the cards, he was the main Kirtan leader and he was supposed to lead the Kirtan throughout the procession. And he did that. And uh, Satya was there and she uh, got very much disturbed. He said, why is this, why is this fellow is uh, still so much prominent and she, he's singing here in front of everyone. And then she posted something on the internet. And the GBC, particularly the North American GBC, they took that very serious, what was posted on the internet. And there was a two day full, full on GBC discussion about the Lokanath Maharaj issue. Again, he was stopped from giving initiation for some time. Again, he had to write uh, letters to his disciples. And then in 2017, he was cleared even again to go and travel in North America and initiate there by the North American Council and GBCs. 2017. Yes. Wow. <coughs> like uh, once, once, twice. There, it continually every few years. It seems seems to be coming back. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is. It is what you call in a sense double jeopardy because actually the GBC, uh, that time a committee of the GBC dealt with the whole thing, punished the Maharaj, kind of uh, cleared the Maharaj. And then again, he got punished in a sense by that publicity in India. Uh, and then uh, it was out in the open. It wasn't hidden anymore. Then in 2011, the entire GBC took up the thing and come to a final conclusion, again, punished the Maharaj. Okay. And, yeah, continue. And, and, and basically that is the Supreme Court, right? Uh, if you're... Uh, in our society, the GBC is the ultimate managerial authority, and it was a full session of all the GBC members. It was not a, a committee anymore. It was right out open there, and uh, they had come to a conclusion, and that should have been it. But now we are in, 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 in 21, and the issue is again brought up. This time it is not brought up by Satya at all. It's brought up by somebody else. Actually, actually, what happened is a little different. <laughs> I think two years back, Maharaj, um, Maharaj uh, when I was on Padiyatra, we had one devotee who joined. His name is Istadev Das. He's in Mayapur now. So he was, uh, he was my right-hand man on Padiyatra. He was my advanced party man. We were planning around and doing the same. He did very good service, excellent service. So he had a brother. So when we came to his village, then his brother seen the Padiyata and he seen, seen, seen Istadev. And so his brother also joined. And his name became Shakshi Gopal later on. And after Padiyata, Maharaj pulled him out from Padiyata and made him his servant. And he was Maharaj's servant, I don't know for how long, maybe 10 years. For a very long period of time, he was Maharaj's servant. And then he married a girl from Mauritius. He was first staying in Mauritius, and then they ended up in Alachua in America. And uh, his son is like a very fired up devotee. And um, he was insisting that I want to take initiation, I want to take initiation. So Lokanath Maharaj initiated him. I think he was 13 years old or something. And they put a video out on YouTube, innocently, that Lokanath Maharaj is initiating his youngest disciples. They were like joyful and they wanted to propagate. And it was just sitting there and nothing happened. Then some other devotee got disgruntled in Alachua and he, he instigated some of the Guru Kulis. Look what happened, look what happened, you know, the Maharaj. This is, a, this is how the agitation amongst a group of devotees started in America. And out of that, that uh, Saraswati Jones Richardson, she picked it up and she started uh, to put it on Facebook. I see. Yeah, the it's it, the the way that we all heard about it here was through there. They had done a podcast about how Iskon had not dealt with it properly, uh, and that Maharaj should um, stop initiating, stop traveling. He should. Uh, 
come down from his guruship post, from his post in ISKCON. So it seems that uh, this was dealt with a number of times, but now it has come out again for, it, it seems like the most dramatically now, that this should be dealt with again. But first so of all, it, yeah. First of all, I'm not on Facebook. I have a Facebook account. I have maybe once in six months post a picture of my deity. So if I travel on, I, I do a lot of uh, extreme travel. If I go on some Yatra in Himalaya with a group called boys and we're somewhere in some far out place, maybe I post a thing on Facebook. Hey, I, uh, you know, I, I'm in Manasarova or something. That's a maximum. And once in a while, a picture of my Tulsi is super big on my veranda. Maybe I post that or my deities have a new dress. Once in a six months, I'm not a Facebook person at all. It, it, it is not a in, in integral part of my life. I, I couldn't care less. So I'm I'm not going on Facebook. I'm not read what so much. I, some website is there. I'm not gone there. I don't know what is out there. But then because uh, I'm part of the India committee and uh, there were some comments by Malati, very uh, degradatory comments by Malati about Indians. And that was uh, in reply to something which was going on in Saraswati. So, uh, post that's uh, how, how I had to read some of the stuff which was going on. People send it to me. Hey, she sends this, she sends that, she said this, she said that. So, to some degree, I have an idea what is going on there. But uh, again, I'm coming back to the to the first point. Uh, there is a difference between what they're projecting and what actually happened. So, from 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 both sides. What Satya is saying and what Lokanath Maharaj is saying that he held the book. So it was a downside of his hand went towards the lower area of her chai. But now on Saraswati's post, if you read it, it looks like he put his hand right upside down and, and grabbed her genitals. That's not what has happened. It is an accidental, inappropriate touch. If, I, if it has to become to an abuse, there has to be intention. You understand? Right. And even even many things, uh, I don't want to say Satya is not a victim. She's obviously a victim. Okay. And she obviously got violated. That's not the point here. Uh, but the point is, uh, in order to make it abuse, there has to be intent. intent. Uh, so if I'm going to somebody's home uh, and I know he has a young girl and my idea is, hey, I will groom the girl and, and finally, I, I, after she's comfortable with me, then I put put my hands on her. That that was never be Maharaj's intent. He's not a child abuser. But they make him looking like he, he's a serial rapist and child abuser. That's not, that, that not what happened. Mm. What happened is he was holding the, the, was holding the book up, uh, upside down uh, and uh, touched the lower part. Uh, which which which, which uh, Satya calls a, a, a secret area or a private area, upside down holding the book. Right. And now, uh, Satya said in her original interview, nobody ever came in. In 2010, she said, "Oh, my mother came in every time, and he would lift up the book or this or that." There's many changes between what is in the original interview and what is said in 2010, which is almost 10 years later. Yeah, but now the incident is 30, 31 years later. Yeah. Right. Yeah, first of all, first of all, there was a gap of three and a half years between the incident and, and the original interview. Right. Already three and a half years had passed away there also. Now, the the group that is, tr uh, you know, now bringing this out to the light uh, in 2021, they're saying that ISKCON, the GBC, the CPO, did not deal with this situation properly. That is why that they're bringing it up and they want justice. So what would you, as a, the, the head of the committee who represents Maharaj, what would you say to that? Uh, well, the, the first thing is it was a, was an indecent and inappropriate uh, touch, an accidental incident. It was not on intention. And, and who is more qualified than CAP and Associates? Is any 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 CPU uh, are that much trained that the professors in 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 child, uh, child psychology and 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 
and have dealt thousands of abuse cases in the, in, 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 in the Christian church, who is that much qualified? These people are, are the most qualified and they cleared, cleared Maharaj. They actually said, said uh, that, uh, that they feel he's qualified even to be a guru. That's what, what, what those calm is written in their report. So, and yes, and Maharaj was punished and Maharaj was again, uh, was again punished in 98 and he again was punished in, uh, in 2011, <laughs> isn't it? And see, everyone will say, hey, uh, what is the harm? He can just step down as a guru. Huh? So let's say you, 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 you tell me that, you, you ask that, hey, why don't Maharaj step down as a guru? You asked that. Why doesn't he step down as a guru? Okay. How many devotees you made uh, in your lifetime so far? Uh, probably zero. Okay. So would you stop whatever you're doing right now and make at least 10 devotees in the next two years? Could you do that? Probably not. Probably not. And then, then you would take another hundred like you, or maybe five hundred like you, and then we would come to the point of making that many devotees. Ultimately, a Vaishnava is, in in our judgment, a, a Vaishnava is judged by how many people he can turn into devotees, right? Mm. Right. And and yes, Satya Satya and Satya's mother suffered. Her family suffered. Okay. Now now. You, you just put yourself in my shoes now. There's 5,000 registered initiated disciples by Lokanath Maharaj. So let's say I, I'm, I'm living here in Vrindavan in the Goshala. I go down to Keshigat. I meet a sadhu on the way. I get inspired by the sadhu. I take initiation from the sadhu. I give the sadhu my money, my service, my anything. I bring other people to the sadhu. And after 10 years, I find out the sadhu is bogus. Can I blame anybody? No. No. But in ISKCON, the situation is a little different. We're coming to ISKCON because we're attracted by Srila Prabhupada and by the movement. And then the GBC says, okay, here's your authorized person to take initiation from. Right? Yeah. So the very, GB, the very GBC should have, at, at, should have at 93 decided that this person is not fit to be a guru and said, okay, that's it. Bun. Again, they could have decided in 96. Again, they could have decided in 2011, right? But they said, no, 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 you, you keep ahead. He's, he's, your, he's your man to take shelter of. Now, now 5,000 5, devotees are depending on the Maharaj because he's, he's, a, he's an inspiration in their spiritual life and he, he's, he's a guru. They're rendering service in ISKCON to the Maharaj. He is an inspiration. Right. And 50% of them most probably also mothers. They also have children. So, so how much distress are, are we are all now that, that nobody thinks about? That, no, that no, no, nobody thinks about. about. No one's thinking about the disciples that you're talking about who yes. are so, under so much distress regarding what the situation that's continually happening now where he's being put on trial again and again and again. Yes. See, see, see nobody has problem with, with Saraswati. It, it's a free world. She can say whatever she likes. I'm not feeling any offended. I can even feel, feel her viewpoint. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. We have problem with that the GBC... Uh, see, see the North American GBC after uh, after Saraswati started going there, and some some guru police approached some of the leaders in North America. They written a very bad letter actually to the congregation in America, and then the GBC EC did take it up immediately. Mar they ring Maharaj, they, they send a mail to Maharaj, and basically say, "Hey, you better step down from initiating, and all your posts in Iskon. You can do it for you can do it on your own terms." Oh, you have uh, in five hours we're going to have a meeting and we strip you of everything. The humble Maharaj didn't say no, you can't do that. He, he, he said, please give me two days time to think about that. After 50, 50 more than 50 years of service, totally dedicated service, uh, 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 the society who had judged him already more than, more than twice, uh, says, hey man, you, you just stop stop being who you are 
and just give up everything and uh, how is that possible so so we, we don't have a problem with saraswati our problem is only our internal problem with, with our management and and they're thinking they're upset with the gvc just think how much we are upset so there's a there is a divide between the managerial authority in North America and in India. There is a there's a disconnect there. There's a disagreement there regarding how, how to deal and how it was dealt with in the past. Well, well, straightforwardly, there is already a divide because uh, the devotees in India, foreign and Indian, um, we have a different culture. We have a we have a culture of Shastra, we have a culture of uh, Vedic, Vedic, Vedic thinking, I would say. We, 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 are, we are more, more, um, how you call that, uh, old fashioned. Mm. That's a different word for that. Conservative. Um, yeah, conservative. That's what I was looking for. So, but so, so point yeah. is, there was already a strong agitation. There was a, mm. str a strong agitation. And, uh, um, when the Lokanath Maharishi issue came, then the, the uh, Indian leadership, IIC, they asked me to give a presentation. Uh, uh, I'm part of the body and, and they said, hey, what has happened? What is going on? Why don't you present here something? You know? And uh, in, that, in that presentation, I brought a very strong point that actually, actually in that Robbins Jones case in America, that's, that's before, before our time, um, that time, actually, there was a lot of North American temples were on the line for that because the court case, uh, uh, because it was a huge amount of money, they, they were held hostage. And Lokanath Maharaj with his Padhyatra preaching, preaching that uh, religion is not a crime. And after the Padhyatra had all his devotees standing there, I think, I, I, I don't know exactly, the, I'm, I'm not from America, they were standing in front of some Supreme Court and holding day and night prayer meetings for, 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 for extended time, of, uh, time, day and night in the freezing cold, in the snowstorm. And one of the, one of the su Supreme Court judges seen that and he pulled out the case and brought it forward and, 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 and smashed the case. And that's why uh, most of the North American temples are actually still with an ISKCON. If we would have lost that case, it would have been a very dare scenario. So, so, so Lokanath Mar that was at the same time Lokanath Maharaj was there in that man's house. So, so he did a tremendous service for the American Yatra in that way. Right. A tremendous service. Right. So what is the latest decision or actions that have been made by either the North American GBC or the Indian GBC? Like, where is this going now? Um, okay. Um, some of the Indian GBC members pushed the GBC in general. So Maharaj uh, is again uh, allowed to initiate and uh, the permission of, uh, of traveling or initiating is given to the national bodies. That means let's say Maharaj wants to go to Mauritius and some people want to take initiation from Maharaj. Uh, the, the council of Mauritius, Mauritius can decide if Maharaj can go there and initiate there, goes. Or only go there and not initiate, or only initiate and not go. That is uh, up to the national bodies right now. And I don't think Maharaj is uh, reinstated in the Kirtan ministry as a minister. And I don't think he's reinstated in the Padiatra as a minister, for, as a Padiatra minister. And uh, ISKCON India has uh, the, bureau, the bureau, which is not a kind of a GBC body. Uh, ISKCON India is registered with the charity commissioner in Mumbai. And so uh, that society has to have a body which which is basically the bureau is a body is of the society of iskon india who owns iskon india so the, the bureau is a very powerful body because the bureau own is, is this as a trustees for iskon india they're owning they, they have the they have the how you call proprietorship 
on behalf of the government or of, of the whole money and properties of ISKCON India. The Bureau has made a very strong statement in favor of Lokanat Maharaj and saying that uh, we want this case to be closed and um, that whatever you decide uh, will not be applicable in India. Whatever the North American... No, the GBC. Not the, uh, North, it, it is not with the North American uh, Committee. It is now with the GBCEC. Oh, with the EC, okay. Executive Committee and the, the EC had given the case to the to the to the International Child Protection uh, Office, uh, Kamlesh Krishna in London. And then they had taken it back, and right now they have a panel out of uh, out of five people, two are from India, and they're discussing. Uh, first of all, looking into did the GBC do the right thing or the wrong thing? What actually happened? Uh, they're ruminating the whole thing. It's a it's an independent panel, and they're just going through the whole thing again from A to Z uh, and checking out and give a recommendation to the GBC. Then the GBC will find out how they're going further from there. You being close to Maharaj, what is Maharaj's attitude during these times? Uh, this time Maharaj is totally understood. In, in, 90, in 98, Maharaj was very disturbed. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the issue came again in 2010-11, Maharaj literally couldn't sleep for, for a very long period of time. He, he couldn't, couldn't sleep anymore. He was sleepless. Uh, he, he was suffering very greatly. This time, Maharaj is 72 years old. He's totally self-realized. Uh, he's a sadhu. He, he's given up caring about that. What about the disciples like yourself and who all you, who you represent? What is their attitude throughout these times? Well, obviously, uh, if you have a spectrum, let's say, for, of, 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 of between 1 and 10 or 1 and 100, um, you have different, different viewpoints. Yeah. I, I, I'm basically... I, I, I just pushed into the thing. My, I have to like, like I'm talking here. I'm talking on this Zoom meeting and that Zoom meeting. This person and that person. I, I, I have tons of people. Now it's a little bit cooled down. At some point, I was almost every morning instead of chanting Japa, I'm on some Zoom conference, some conference discussing that thing and ruminating it and again and again. I, I, I have no problem. I, actually, this whole thing actually brought me closer to Maharaj than I've ever had been. I always, uh, as I said in the beginning, I, I always uh, felt felt something actually bad had happened there. And after studying the whole thing in and out, I, I got my conscience clear. It was an inappropriate, a accidental, inappropriate touch. Uh, there wasn't any bad intent on, on Maharaj. Uh, he, he didn't have anything bad in his mind. And always my feeling was, why the sannyasi interacted with the girl? Because a very active person was confined to that house. And, and the owner of the house and the mother, they were all saying, you go to the girl, sit with the Maharaj, learn from the Maharaj. That, that was his mandate. He, he felt, he felt uh, a, 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 as a repayment for the hospitality of the family, that's what he had to do. That was his service when he was staying there. So th these two things got cleared from my mind. So I, I feel free. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not so... Uh, as a fully dedicated devotee, I'm a full-time devotee. I'm serving here in Vrindavan. I'm not getting a payment. They're giving me a flat and, and, and some perks, but uh, I'm paying for the, for the education of my kids. I'm doing the whole thing on my own money, somehow or another, which I'm getting from my family or this or that. I inherited something. I'm investing. I invested that. I'm living on that interest uh, very meagerly. I, I'm, I'm not like... A, 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 so I'm fully dedicated person to the society. So for me to get into a fight with the GBC, it's obviously very much disturbing uh, in my, I would say, my consciousness, in my worldview, in a sense. Uh, yeah. I'm a little bit disturbed in that regard. Mm -hmm. Personally, uh, it is okay. Actually, that thing helped me in my spiritual life. Sure, sure. Now, what would you say to those devotees who are continually... Now, bringing this up and pushing very hard that Maharaj do this, Maharaj must do that, he must step down, et cetera, et cetera. What would you say to those devotees? No, everyone has a right. 
to sing whatever he likes and in the West everyone has a right to express it. So I have no problem with it. But what I told to you, how many devotees you, you made and how many devotees you think you, you can make? How much you can dedicate your life? Uh, why are you going for somebody who has done an, uh, who has done a wrong move 31 years back? He has never done anything bad before or after. Uh, why you make it your life's mission to, to, to go for that? <coughs> Ultimately, Krishna takes care, isn't it? Nobody escapes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's my feeling. I think their point of view is that you know, there needs to be more checks and balances uh, and that because Maharaj has God brothers who are on the GBC, things were covered up uh, no. because, because of the, it was their friend. This is the, no. this is the allegations that, are, that no. are being said. No, no. First of all, Maharaj is not a GBC member. He is definitely not part of the club. He's not having a MacBook Air. He's not having an iPhone. He's not wearing Birkenstock shoes. He's not. Uh, he's not from a particular religious community, which is prominent uh, among the American GBCs. He's definitely not part of the club, and he's definitely not their friend. He, he until today, he's not owning a single property. He's not even having a bank account. Mm -hmm. He's not part of the club at all. If he would be part of the club, then they wouldn't treat him now as they're treating him. He wouldn't be treated in 2011 as they were treating him. He's not part of the club at all. So he's not part of the club. Definitely not. Right. Are there any other details that you like to talk about that I didn't ask about? No, I think uh, I think uh, I think uh, Saraswati can say whatever she wants, and she has all the right. And uh, I don't think that uh, child abuse is neglected in Iskon. I can I can only tell you about two places I know very well. That is uh, Vrindavan and Mayapur. Uh, I'm here in Vrindavan. Um, I don't want to go too, too deep. Um, my my own kids have suffered abuse. Um, my my daughter was 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 uh, was abused more than once, and one was kind of severe. And that fellow has been thrown out, and he has not been seen again. The second fellow has been thrown out, and he has not been seen. One 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 of my sons got somewhat abused that guy got thrown out and we was never seen again in this uh, we have very strained and uh, and i'm part of that here in brindavan there is no question of uh, anyone getting away with anything here but i mean it shouldn't and, happen in in the first place though right you you, you can't fully avoid that if you have a big society with, with, with thousands of people uh, we, we're trying our level best to have, have 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 but it is see it, it is difficult you know you have a temple and you're going to the temple and you're serving in the temple and your kids are part of the temple and your kids are roaming around in the temple how you can stop that they're interacting with other members of the temple you want that isn't it you, you don't want to keep your kids at home and once they're interacting with so many people uh, then see if you have a small temple where there are only five people that maybe won't happen but uh, here in Iskon Vrindavan uh, we, we have uh, we have at least uh, 300 300 full-time devotees and another five six hundred workers those are almost a thousand people the kids can interact with how you want to you can't hundred percent control everyone we have cct every everywhere any tiny incident has happened immediately we, we go for it but you can't out 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 rule it altogether difficult technically difficult i would say i also want to ask you what would you say to your god family in these troubling times from your perspective as being a senior disciple and someone who's studied this and someone who's kind of thought about this a lot, internalized it, your conscience been cleared by it. What would you say to your God family? I, first of all, would advise anyone, first of all, be very careful with any information you take from the Internet. 
because anyone can write anything on the internet. If you go on YouTube, there's some so-called scientists, uh, you know, like I, I'm sitting here in my home and backside they have a whole thing with scientific uh, instruments and this and that. And, and they're telling you all sorts of things. In this Corona time, there was such a spectrum uh, of people telling stuffs, man. And hey, if, 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 you, you can't believe anything. Once it comes to the internet, you, you don't know yeah. what, 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 what is the intent, what is the knowledge. So, so, so first, first of all, everyone, there's another important thing. On the internet, there is that letter. Maharaja's apology letter. What year was that? That was written in 2011. It oh. was never published because Lokanath Maharaj did not write it. So you're saying there's a letter out there that he did not yes. write? And no. that people are saying that he no. wrote? Yes. That's horrible. It was... It was done by the GBC together with some legal expert. It was put in front of Maharaj and Maharaj clearly, clearly objected and said, that is not what, what has happened. That is not what I have done. And the letter was kept on ice. The first reverence to that letter we found in 2017, it was out in a Russian version. That's the first time we ever seen it on the internet. So somebody from the GBC committee, somehow or another, it must have leaked out from there. And many disciples reading that letters and losing faith in Maharaj. Because it looks like Maharaj himself admitted that he did a serious child sexual abuse. But Maharaj has never, never, never written that letter. And he has, he has clearly said that that is not what has happened when, when that letter was sent to him and he was supposed to send it out as an apology letter. He strongly objected to that. And that letter was never sent out. That's a large detail that many people probably don't know. Yes, and I know I know some some of uh, my close friends also lost face in Maharaj because they seen that letter. Wow. Hmm. That's why I'm saying you cannot fully trust what you see on the internet. Right. I can I can make a letter about you and I publish it in the internet and I write Namras there. I even can somehow another get get hold of your signature and, and, and photocopy it on that letter and say, look, he look, he typed it and he signed it. And and you don't even know the letter is out there. So many people will think bad things about you. See, see the, the Shastra tells us very clearly, don't gossip and don't offend Vaishnavas. Because I can tell you something right now about a third person, which you don't, which you know exists, but which you don't know very, very in detail. And I can tell you terrific things about that person. And you will start thinking in your mind, oh, this person is such a bad person. <clears throat> and you will start telling your friends about that. But at the end, I maybe have just totally exaggerated or maybe even I have lied to you. And you and your mind start to do so much Vaishnava apparat and so many offenses. Uh, and, and, and your whole consciousness and your whole spiritual life will get spoiled from that. I, I mean, the Ritviks had whole magazines out called Back to Prabhupada. They yeah. were just offending and ripping people apart. And there were some websites, I don't want to say their names. And they were just criticizing people left and right. And, and, and devotees were reading that. And, 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 and they will just start to offend people they have never even seen in their life. Because somebody else was saying this person has done this and that. We all have done something wrong in our life. But, 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 but we, we shouldn't be flies. We shouldn't, look, we shouldn't look, look for the sore spot. We look, shouldn't look for, for, for the stool at the side of the road. We're, we're supposed to be bees. We're supposed to find the flower and take the nectar, right? Yeah. That is my real advice. That, that, is, that is actually, this is actually, which we, if you want to actually progress as a person and as a Krishna conscious person, you have to have a positive outlook. And you should first always give the person uh, the benefit of a doubt, right? Before you just uh, put him in a bad, bad section and say, that's it, man. He, he's like this, he's like that. 
th- playing devil's advocate, the same can be said about what you're saying. Yes. This is just Sanak Sanatan Prabhu talking on Nam Ras's podcast and speaking, you know, his perspective. It could be untrue. Yeah, what right. Because I'm lo- I'm Lokan Admara's disciples. I have to advocate for him, right? Right. <laughs> right. What, else, what, what else should I do, right? Yeah, o- obviously. So so make yourself a, make make yourself a, a educated opinion. I think I think Satya's interview is even there on 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 Damodar's website. At least somebody saying it was supposed to be there. Now this is the first time you hear our version. We're not put up a website and say defend Lokanath Maharaj. Uh, we're not putting we're not putting things on on some Facebook post or this or that. We're not putting things on YouTube and uh, we, we we won't do that. That's the first time actually you're giving me a chance. Uh, to, to speak our side of the thing and, and, and who knows that maybe will backlash on you also. I mean I'm I'm just I'm just interviewing you as a neutral yeah. party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just still I'm just I'm still just saying. Yeah, it could happen so, and I'm ready I'm ready for that. I'm I've already got backlash okay. for other different episodes that I've done. So I'm not new to that. But okay. um also um I guess I guess now it's it's I'm trying to understand yeah why does this why does this why is your perspective something that's authoritative not that you're saying that you're an authority but but you being the representative of Maharaj's team why does it why, why should they take your perspective into account no, everyone can make their can make their own opinion. Right. Uh, but but I did read everything. I, I, I read. I, I'm in depth, uh, seen what whatever has been written and 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 said uh, over the last 30, uh, 31 years. Right. Is there any authoritative documents that people can read to get to come to their own conclusion, or is it that we have to kind of? figure out what is the authoritative documentation no uh, we have a lot of uh, research document on the issue which which we could publish somewhere i don't know where okay i think that would be yeah, helpful, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be honest see, see, see basically basically um that's the first time we come out in something like social media here uh, our business uh, as i said uh, Saraswati can write. I, I have I, I, many people get offended by her. I, I say she can write whatever she wants, and if I don't like it, I don't go on her Facebook page, right? Right. As That's simple true. as simple. So uh, basically, uh, our our issue is 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 with the GBC, is with the ISKCON Society. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Sanak Sanat Prabhu, it was a, a pleasure speaking with you to hear the other side of the story from what's being said on the internet. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we end here? No, um, basically, uh, I'm worried. I'm worried about the cultural and philosophical break between ISKCON India and ISKCON America. And this is one more issue which puts uh, puts uh, another straw on the camel's back, uh, which eventually could lead to a break. Uh, that would make me very sad. Um, there's a big group in India, which hopefully is looking forward to that. I'm definitely not part of that. I'm, I'm definitely hoping that uh, we all can um, unity and diversity that we can all come together uh, in a functioning working way and i hope that iscon uh, can uh, come out of this crisis more strong as before and that we can all unitedly preach uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's uh, philosophy and sila Prabhupada's preaching mission and the Gaudiya vaishnava mission in general i i, I only hope for that i hope that that uh, whatever Maharaj has has been done wrong uh, can be forgiven by the family and by other people. They could hope they could forgive, uh, and then once they have forgiven, uh, <clears throat> then they can again focus on something more positive. Because uh, spending your whole life 
the child would uh, bring somebody else down because he's done a mistake, I don't think is uh, very beneficial for anybody. It will create a lot of negativity and uh, negativity is in general not, not good for Krishna consciousness. So the, 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 the outmost, what, what you need is enthusiasm, Utsaharan. You need to be enthusiastic yeah. if you actually want to perform a, a, a good level of of devotional service and particularly preaching, you have to be enthusiastic and to focus on on, on, on uh, other people's faults and uh, on negativity, I don't think is very beneficial for anybody. Managerial or personal or spiritual for, for every individual. I, I hope we could all join together and preach Chichani Mahaprabhu's mission without any any further disturbance. Thank you. And thank you for sticking your neck out and, and, and coming on and talking about this. This is, uh, I think this will be helpful for to hear other perspective from what's being said. And and that's what it is. It's someone else's perspective. We're entitled yes. to other people's perspectives. Yes. Yes. It's, not, it's not that we have to uh, demonize someone or villainize someone or a group of people for their different perspective, which may be different yes. from someone else's and North America or wherever it is. But um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, Prabhu, if there's any way that devotees, if want to contact you or contact the team that represents Maharaj, is there a way that uh, people can inquire in, uh, personally? Yeah, I have a, I have an email and I have a WhatsApp number. Can, can you know. give me your email so I could post it on, on the screen for, for the devotees watching? Yeah, how will do that? Say that Sanaka, Please. Sanatana. Sanaka Sanatana Das Sanaka Sanatana D A S at Gmail dot com. Okay, I'm just gonna post it on the screen right now. Okay, Sanaka Sanatana Das D A S at Gmail dot com. Yes, fantastic. Correct. So if you'd and like to WhatsApp. connect, if you'd like to connect, uh, you don't have to put the WhatsApp. If you'd like to yeah. connect with Sanaka, so I can send me an email and then I can give them the number if I like. Exactly. Okay. If Fair you have any questions about what he has expressed here, if you'd like to discuss it with him, if you'd like to inquire, please, e uh, the email is there on the screen. For those listening on the podcast, just audio, it's sanaka sanatana das at gmail.com. Uh, you contact him uh, about what he said here if you'd like to. Prabhu, again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, stay on the line. I'm just going to turn off the recording. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.